This parking lot in Santa Barbara, California is more than what it seems. It's become a refuge for people who have lost their homes in America's mortgage crisis and now have no choice but to use their cars as a place to sleep at night. This is basically what I have to, to sleep in. Bonnie is one of nearly 100 people who live in 12 lots like this one that are spread out around Santa Barbara. Put my legs over there and just sleep right here. She used to be a successful real estate broker until the mortgage crisis took her job and her two homes worth more than a million dollars each. My home in Topanga had a servant's entrance and a private driveway. And this little two bedroom place, two acres, we had four dogs, sheep, chickens, roosters. That was the house um, that wouldn't sell. And I bought this one without it selling. And both houses together were 10000 a month. Which I handled the payment for a while. At the end of the one house, the, um, the big house in Topanga the, that I paid 1.2 for. 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. um, we got an offer. It was a short offer. The bank turned it down. It was 900 and something. That month, after they took my house, they accepted a foreclosure offer for almost the same price that they turned me down for. So they took my home. They didn't have to give me a foreclosure. Bonnie tries to keep her situation a secret and has asked us not to broadcast her full name. But it's not always possible to hide the truth of where she lives. Like the time her car broke down and the mechanic asked to keep it overnight. I had to tell the man at the place, you can't keep my car overnight because I sleep in it. It was hard. That must have been awful. What did he say? He looked very sad. Barbara Harvey also lost her job and was evicted from her rented apartment. She moved here to a beach parking lot where she spent the last few months sleeping in her car next to her dogs to keep warm. The ranger would probably sit right here. He would just lie down there. And then Phoebe, she might just lie up there if I'm lucky. But sometimes I didn't get lucky and they had more room back here than I did. These lots are run by the New Beginnings Foundation. They're a safe place to spend the night for people who have lost everything in the current crisis. I was working as a notary public, uh, signing, um, notarizing signatures on loan documents for people who were refinancing. And that came to a screeching halt, really in December of 2007. I think I may have signed one or two loan packages in January, but that was it. And so there wasn't an income. Entire neighborhoods in California are becoming ghost towns as families lose their homes, leaving them to face life on the street, often totally unprepared. I mean, I have had to stay warm. I was shivering so badly that first night that I thought, well, the now, what I have to do tonight is to be sure that I'm going to be warm, so I retrieved some jackets from storage. Yeah, that's good. You'll be nice and secure there. I put on extra sweater, and I made sure that I was going to be so wrapped up that I wouldn't get cold, and I didn't. I didn't get cold, so we figured that one out. And your dogs helped? And the dogs helped a lot. I mean, just, yeah helped tremendously. You just curled up with them like a blanket? Yeah. Yeah. Had blankets on me and they cur and they were curled up and that was that was the first night that we were comfortable. Well, relatively <laughs> relatively comfortable. I mean we can't we can't dance naked. So that's out. Down the road from where Barbara sleeps, okay, I find Craig Miller living with his wife and two children in a borrowed recreational vehicle. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> he tells me that he was running his own business as a life coach, and when the economy went down, his business went down with it. I think what brought me here is once a snowball starts to roll, it, it starts rolling really fast, and, and 
and sometimes the momentum is faster than you expected it to be and then all of a sudden you've got this huge catastrophe that you're trying to deal with you know sometimes if you're not in a hole you look at the people in the hole and you think why don't they just climb out of it but you don't realize that there's a whole there's a whole other set of issues in the hole and you know it's like sometimes it takes a lot of time just to survive Miller doesn't blame the banks or the government for where he's ended up. He simply calls this the flip side of American life. In America, you, nobody's gonna, nobody looks out for you. That's part of our kind of uh, capitalistic thing. Nobody also tells you what to do. So you can go as far as you wanna go. But that also means nobody's got your back, nobody's looking out for you. And so you can go into oblivion and nobody will know. I want to do the whole Nancy Cap helps to run the Safe Parking Lot program for the New Beginnings Foundation, a homeless outreach organization. I have women who are living in their vehicles who, one lady's 79 years old, you know, she should be retired and, and, you know, relaxing in a nice place, but she's living in her vehicle, you know, and, and going to the bathroom in a jar at night. I mean, this is not... This is not the way it's supposed to be. This is not, there's something really wrong here. I love this whole area. I sold the land here. Real estate broker Tom Matheson does business in Santa Barbara. He knows just how much money there is to be made and lost here. We could go from 800,000 to Montecito, which would be 47 million. And that's the price range we have within a 20-minute drive. So you have eight, uh, 800,000. This is regular residential home, not a condominium, from 800,000 to 47 million on the beach. The financial crisis that is rattling America is hitting top-end real estate as well. Millions in property value lost overnight. There's, there's been properties that have been offered at 28 million, sold for 16 million. There's been properties at uh, 23 million, sold at 14 million. Matheson says that families who couldn't afford to buy in Santa Barbara were still given loans with no down payment and high interest rates. Now to devastating effect. Makes me want to cry. It's hard. Uh, it, it shouldn't happen. I think uh, as a responsible father and parent, you don't want to see that happen. And, but, uh, you know, society works on you a little bit where you want to have something better. And, um, and you, you see that happening, and it's just really hard. The death of the American dream is here. Of people who had houses, they're looking at them, and it's like looking at smoke and ashes. And no one's there to help them pick up the pieces. You know, it's like they, these people... The thing we need, we need to be preventive in this country. We need, don't let people become homeless because that, once they hit the streets, that's gonna be the, the death of us. I feel alone, I feel abandoned, I feel, I just feel bad about myself. It's like, who were you? Where are your personal things? Nothing. For some, the parking lot is just a stop on the road. And a few days after we first met, Barbara Harvey has received good news. An old friend heard that she was sleeping in a parking lot and has offered her a place to stay. Hello. Good to see you. Come on in. No, you can stay Barbara here. greets me at the door of her new home along with the Labradors who kept her warm on so many cold nights on the street. This is my bedroom and obviously the doggy's bedroom. Ranger sleeps here. Phoebe likes to sleep either on my bed in the corner here or else she'll sleep uh, in the cupboard. Uh, I put a, put a pillow in there for her in the, in the cupboard. Today Harvey looks like a different person, but she doesn't feel different. Harvey believes that being homeless gave her a new perspective on middle-class aspirations, along with the ability to survive loss. 
problem is is that the people who feel broken by being homeless were dependent on their homes for their identity. They were dependent on all of their belongings and possessions as their identity, and that isn't who they are. I'm a big believer in the American dream, but maybe not traditionally how we think of as the American dream being, you know, two kids and a dog and whatever, a three bedroom house. Uh, I really, I'm a big believer in, in that people should have the freedom to follow the God-given design of their life and who they are and not try to fit into what everybody else thinks they should or shouldn't be or do and, and that that ought to lead to abundance. For Miller, life in a parking lot has redefined what abundance really means. He says that this has all woken him up to what's important. Are you happier now than you were five years ago? Oh yeah, oh, hands down. Right now, in this parking lot. Yeah, yeah. Even with the daily frustrations that may come, I, f I just, I'm less encumbered. And then I, I feel like when I was happy, I was just, I was pretending to be happy. And so everybody around me was, ha was much happier, it seemed like, than me. And they were pleased with my performance and, my, and who I was, but I wasn't pleased. And, uh, and I'm very pleased uh, now. And I, I mean, and I become more pleased, obviously, with each new step. For Barbara Harvey, finding a new beginning at her age will not be easy. But tomorrow morning, she'll see the sun rise through something other than her car window. I see, actually, a very positive future. I don't know what I'm going to be doing to earn a living, quite honestly. But it's okay because whatever it is, then that'll be the right thing for me to do. That's the way I see it. If, it's, if I get hired, then I'm, that's the right place to be. So that's an adventure too. If it's, if it's all an adventure, it makes it simpler. <laughs>